out of here, Alan. You have no right to come in here. I have every right. I paid a million dollars for those rights. I intend to exercise them. I don't have to tell you anything. You tell me or I'll beat it out of you. Where is Aunt Alice took him to work with her, all right? What do you do? Give the child to anyone who shows up at the door? I needed some time to be alone. What do you mean, to get drunk? To think. Oh, give me a break. You want the child out of the house so you can use every waking moment to drink yourself stupid. You're disgusting. Don't do that. Don't even think about it anymore. I've had you, Susan, right up to here. Great. Now get out. Susan, before I go, I want it made very, very clear to you. You are not a fit mother anymore, Susan. You're not even a poor excuse. Are you finished? I haven't even begun. I'm going to take him away from you. I'm going to take Jason away from you, and I'm going to give him a decent home because he deserves it. You can't do it. You watch me. I don't have to watch you. You will never get my son. You understand that? Besides, even if I would think of letting you have him, which I won't, that slut of a wife of yours wouldn't let you bring him into your own home. You're kidding. No, I'm serious. I'm actually serious. Susan bought everything Delphina showed her. I mean, now, if that wasn't enough, Alan picked his thing is so perfect all of the time. That moment to inform Susan that he didn't think that she was taking care of little Jason properly. Oh, dear. What did Susan say to that? I told him to drop dead and she left. But, however, Alan was undaunted and uh, we took it up from there. He is out. Absolutely obsessed with that child. Well, Alan is a very concerned father. He has every right to be. Fine. I, uh, I admit, he has reason to be. She's a lush. Hmm. But I have no intention of playing mommy to her little child. Who just happens to be Alan's child, too. Okay, great, great. If she can't raise him, then Alan can find someone who can. But I am not a candidate for that job. Listen, Monica, you know, you like this strange thing. Excuse me, ladies, excuse me. I was oh, wondering Steve? if either of you know where Alan is, when he'll be back. Jesse tells me he hasn't checked in. Uh, is it an emergency, Steve? I mean, I'm, I'm saying that only because, uh, well, I think I know where Jesse might start looking for him. Oh, it can wait. Actually, I'm just preparing next year's preliminary budget, and I need Alan's input. Oh, I'm sure he'll be very helpful. He's quite busy on his own budget lately. And we all worry about expenses these days, don't we? Oh, yes, I know that. I've been told frequently. Well, if you do see Alan before I do, tell him I'd like to have a talk with you. Will do, Steve. Let's see. Okay, where were we? Oh, right. Uh, Mother of the Year Award. Okay, Monica, I understand how you feel. And I think it's quite remarkable that you accepted Alan being the father of that child in the first place. I didn't place. have a choice, Gail. I either have to love Alan with his fault or not at all. Exactly. And you decided that you do love him. Or I'm just stuck with him, which at times amounts to the same thing. No, not at all. It's not the same thing. The truth is, you love the whole man. And that includes the fact that he is Jason's father. Excuse me. Excuse me. Are you suggesting that if I love Alan, I also must love the little brat? No, I am not. I am suggesting that Jason is a part of Alan's life. That's what you have to accept. He's a part of it now, and he always will be. Well, knowing it is not the same thing as, as, as accepting it. Excuse me, Gail, I don't follow you. Sorry. Look, you love your husband. The fact is, your husband fathered a son by another woman. Now, that's something you're just going to have to learn to live with, sweetheart. Close, please uh, find the papers for your signature. Very truly yours. Etc. Etc. Okay, uh, do you want this, uh, sent out today? No, it can wait till tomorrow morning. Okay. How's your little lover boy? What? Blackie. Why do you ask? Well, you haven't talked about him in a while. I just want to make sure that everything is okay. Mm. Everything's just great, thank you. But if you don't mind, I'd rather not discuss my personal life during your business hours. I have a solution to that problem. Here you go. I don't understand. Well, being as though I'm the boss, I say that business day is over. So why don't you pour us a couple of drinks? Because happy hour has just begun. Susan. Is this a personal affair or are you open to the public? My doors are always open to you. 
Laura, why don't we finish this conversation later on? Of course. I've got mail I need to get out. Excuse me. Mm -hmm. Would you like a drink, or is that a stupid question? Just a small one, please. Your wish is my command. So tell me, uh, what do I owe the pleasure? Came to thank you for the flowers. They're beautiful. Well, that too was my pleasure. I like the card, too. These days I didn't think you really gave me a second thought. I thought you knew me better than that. Uh, I think about you all the time, more than you realize. Yeah? Yeah. Kind of nice to hear, you know. I needed that, especially today. Rough day? The pits. <laughs> Tell you what, why don't I take you out to dinner tonight and uh, we'll talk about it. I'd like that. Good. I'd like that, too. Where would you like to go? Oh, gosh, I don't know. You know, I have a couple of steaks at home. At least I think I do. Um, I'm sure there's something there for a salad. You know, I'm real good at those little impromptu salads and stuff like you that. You are? Yeah. All right. We can have dinner at my house if you want, then, just the two of us. That sounds fine. Okay. Under one condition. What? We don't talk about business. Tonight, it's going to be strictly personal. And, uh, now we come to the... Uh... Outpatient department. I've broken it down to uh, the last quarter to uh, where we've been over budget 12%. I'll project that on an annual basis, and the answer is pretty obvious. Don't you agree? I'm sorry, Steve. I wasn't concentrating. Are you all right? I have a, a problem, a personal problem. I actually, I've asked Lee to come here to discuss it with me. Well, Alan, I need your thinking on this budget. You will have it. Is it possible that we could talk about this some other time, though? Well, I was going to take it home with me tonight, but I can't make a projection without your suggestions. You agree, I'm sure, that, uh, that a 12% override is totally unacceptable. What? Uh, and that was the last quarter, Alan. Using a general guideline of 5% annual increase, that quarterly figure jumps to 48%, and 5% more brings it into slightly more than double. Uh, to be exact, Fifty and four tenths percent. Now we can't live with that, Alan. Oh, I got away from the office as soon as I could after you called. Steve, good to see you. Good to see you, Lee. Well, look, Alan, I, I hope you'll get over this uh, personal business quickly. Yes, yeah, so do I. And just let me know when you're ready, and we'll go over these figures. I will. I'm sorry. Oh, quite all right. Well, you sounded very excited when you called. What? I was at Delfina's, and Susan was there, and she's been drinking. Yes, I've heard she's been drinking heavily these days. Shame she doesn't have help. The only thing that concerns me right now is how that is affecting my son. Is it affecting him? You bet it is. I don't know why I ever agreed to this settlement, Lee. I mean, the woman is... she's an unfit mother. Uh, is that just your opinion? It is not just my opinion. I was over at the cottage, the places of pig's eye. It's disgusting. She's not fit. She's not responsible anymore. Well, as an alcoholic myself, I, I'm well aware that the sense of responsibility is one of the first things you lose. Believe me when I tell you she's lost it. I believe you all right, Elder. But, but what I don't understand is what, what is it you want? You're my lawyer. You tell me. Make yourself at home. Well, I was trying to, but the closet is a little small, Scotty. I'm getting smaller. How long do you think you're going to be staying? How come you're home so early? I uh, just came home to change my shirt. I'm running a little late. Yeah, I am too. I have to get to work at the ramp. Don't let me stop you. I just wish we could spend the evening together. Will I see you later? Well, being as though we're... Uh, Sharing the same apartment, I think the possibility is very strong. How soon? Maybe I can get off work early. Actually, I'm going to be kind of late tonight. Why? Business. Come back as soon as you can, though. Promise me. I'll try. When you do, I'll be waiting. I do mean waiting.
Alan, I am both your attorney and your friend. But I can't advise you until I know what it is you want. I want my son. Alan, that's a very commendable attitude. I applaud you for it. But you must consider what a custody suit is going to do to others. Not just yourself now, but uh, Monica, for example. What about Monica? Don't you think you owe it to her to discuss a custody suit before you proceed with it? Look, Monica and I have been through this situation a thousand times. All right. She said that she would support you. I mean, stand by you in a custody suit, no matter what the, the price is to her. So she's going to get involved. Not just Monica, either, but all of your colleagues here at the hospital, all your friends. They're all going to be dragged into it. I cannot ignore my son. I cannot, and I will not. Well, I agree with that. I realize you have spoken to Monica, but I can only suggest, Alan, that you talk to her again. Nice fire, isn't it? Mm -hmm. it smells good, too. Oh, yeah. Yeah, it's pine wood. Oh, I was wondering about that. Mm -hmm. You want some more wine, Rose? No, I'm fine. Thanks. Okay. How about dinner? You getting hungry? Uh, not really. Good, because uh, I'm not hungry either. We'll eat later. Okay. Mark? Yeah? Um, how come you're holding back? Is it something that I've said or something I've done? No, no, of course not, Rose. But you are holding back, and uh, I just want to know why. Well, you're entitled to a, <laughs> an honest answer. I've just been going through a battle with myself this afternoon. Mm -hmm. Yeah, I thought so. Yeah, it's hard to describe, but uh, I just think we need to know more about each other. You think this all went a little too fast? Uh, I don't know, maybe. But I do know that being with you this weekend has triggered some very strong and painful memories. Of your wife? Yeah, Katie, yeah. Sorry. Oh, come on, don't be sorry. But it's only been, what, a year since you lost her? Yeah, but I thought I buried the past. I thought I was at peace with it, but now I know I'm not. I'm, uh, I'm very confused. Is there anything I can do to help? You, you're doing fine. You're listening to me. You're sharing my thoughts, and it's something like, um, like Alice in Wonderland in the Looking Glass. But I think I'm in love with you. But you're not sure. No, damn it, I'm not sure. And that's the problem. Just I make a mess out of so much, and Katie, I want so. I just called you Katie, didn't I? Mm hmm. Sorry, Rose, it's a uh, slip of the tongue. That's all. I didn't, uh, I, uh, I apologize. Don't worry. Slip of the tongue, it's no big deal. Okay, you know, I'm dying of curiosity, so tell me what happened over at the little cottage. It was a disaster, and so is the cottage. <laughs> no cozy little fire, homemade cookies? Homemade gin would be close to the point. She's a drunk. She's an out-and-out -out drunk. I told her so right to her face. I was so furious. Poor baby. She's really putting you through the ringer, isn't she? I can't bear to see Jason being brought up in that environment. I just want to grab him and just run. Of course. You understand, don't you? Oh, yes, of course I understand, Alan. And if I go to court to try to get full custody of that little boy, it'll be all right, won't it? No. Absolutely not all right. But you just said you understood. I do. I also understand that my loyalty is to our son. Now, you can divide yours, but Ellen Jr. has my top priority. Listen, I don't want to deprive Ellen Jr. of anything. I just want to give Jason a, a decent life, a proper home. Which means that you're going to ask me to be a mother to your, your other son. Well, be it in name only, I will not have it, Ellen. Why not? Because I will not have Susan Moore's son in my home. Hang on for one second. He is my son as well, and this is my home as well. Don't you dare tell me what I can or can't do in this house. All right, fine. This is your house. 
But this happens to be my bedroom. So take your little dreams of little Jason and get out. What do you mean, get out? This is where I sleep. Not tonight, you're not. Out. That's fine. That's fine. It's great. A can of this and a can of that. And... Oh, no. It's all right. It's not all right. Nothing's all right. <laughs> it's all right. Come on. Spill their dinner. <laughs> Scotty, why am I so miserable? Can you tell me why? Because you need someone to take care of you. That's all. Come here. Somebody that understands. of night, Raven dares to play both ends against the middle. Two of the most devastatingly handsome men in Monticello, and me. But with a mere flip of a coin, she narrows the field. You tossed a coin and you won. You tossed the coin, and as far as I'm concerned, you won. For Sky and Raven, it's a cunning game of give and take. Mr. Whitney, you are no gentleman. But once she gets her foot in the door, there's no turning back. The Edge of Night, weekdays 